Hey, how's it going? And today I am going to show you how to create a script that allows you to spawn in elements from an array. And this has a lot of practical use and application and allows you to create a lot of different elements in a scene and then swap them out if you want and move them around. And it's just very, very helpful. So you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So there's our fire effects and they're just kind of burning in the sky up there. And I see I got my gun and everything. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to get started on this. So to do this, we're just gonna go into games, first person, and I'll leave it called My Project 8. And we do want starter content and we'll just go create. I'm not gonna save the previous project I did and this will just take a minute. I see Unreal Engine 5.3 is coming out and I think they've fixed some bugs that were in 5.20. So one of those bugs is that you can't really dock and lay it as kind of a hassle. So to be able to dock and layout, we just have to go to Window, Reset, Default, Editor, Layout, and go Content Drawer, and then it'll dock and layout. I did a quick tutorial about that already. So to get started with this, we're just going to go ahead and go into the first person. We're going to right click, and we're going to create a Blueprint class, and it's going to be an Actor class, and we're just going to call this BP underscore spawn -er. and that's it and before we go into the blueprint what we're going to do is come up to window and let's go to place actors and we're going to search for something called target points and these are very useful but they can be a little tricky because it's literally a point in space so sometimes it's hard to place them exactly so I've had problems with trying to place them exactly so what I'm going to do just to save myself some frustration is I'm going to select this static mesh right there. I'm going to come over to its location and I'm going to go copy and then I'm going to drag a target point onto the scene and then in its location I'm going to with the target point selected go paste. So I know it's right over this cube right there. Then I'm going to click and drag it up, drag it up a little bit more and I'm just gonna drag it over here on top of this wall. It's just real easy to lose your perspective because it's just a point. See what I mean? It's hard to see exactly where it is. It's right there, it should be right above that wall, but see, it's not actually, it's off a little bit. So it's a little tricky trying to get these set up right, those points, and just see if I have got it right. You know, see, look, I'm not even looks like I'm pretty much even with that wall right there. So I was noticing from the thing I just showed that the fire seemed a little high in the sky. So what I could do also is just go into the top view here and I see, yeah, I'm right above the wall. Okay, so we're good there. Now what we're gonna do, I'll go back to the perspective and to do this fast, I'm just going to click on the target point. Oops, click on the target point, hold down Alt, and then I can make copies of it very super easily. So this would be good for like if you were, let's say you were working on a big nighttime scene and you wanted steam or fire, a bunch of different locations. This would be one way to really do it rather than going in and placing them all by hand. I mean, you're placing the target points by hand, but you could actually do this. So I'm gonna hold down Alt again and I'm gonna just make like five of these. So I guess the real advantage is if you decide like you wanted to swap out a different effect, like you could easily swap in fire for smoke and things like that. So we got five target points going across this wall. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an array and an array is basically a variable that holds other variables in it. So it's just a very condensed, easy way to work with a lot of variables and data. So we're gonna put references to these five target points into an array and then we're going to loop through that array and spawn in at all the different locations and then we're going to create what's called a class reference and that way we can swap out whatever effect we want at these five target locations so I wanted to do this part first so that it's clear kind of what we're doing exactly so we're going to create an array to put these five elements into and we're actually putting references to those elements in that array so let's double click into the blueprint here and we'll go ahead and dock it up top. And really, this is the main part of the tutorial. We're going to go into the event graph, and we do want the event to begin play. We can delete these other two nodes, and we're going to create a variable. And the variable is going to be an array. So we're going to click on here, 
and we're just going to call this target points, just like that. And the type is going to be our target point object. So we search for target point. It's right there. And when I was first starting, this always confused me and it was kind of intimidating. I didn't know what the sub menu was about. But we want object references to those target points. So we'll click object reference on the sub menu. And then we got to come over here. Right now it's just a single variable and we want to switch it to an array. And then we want to be able to access this array from within the level editor. This is a level editor. So what we're going to do is make that instance editable so we can compile and save that. Then the next thing we need to do is create a class reference variable so we can put in different class assets. That's how we can swap in and out fire, smoke, particles, whatever. So we'll go to variable and we're going to call this actor class, which is the most generic class there is really in Unreal Engine. And what we want for this, the type is going to be an actor. And an actor is a wide range of things. It's the most generic object type. But we don't want an object reference. We need a class reference. So we'll click that. And we do want it to be instance editable. We want to be able to swap it out in the level editor. But we don't want it as an array. We want it as a single variable. So then we'll go compile and save. So if you got this part done, that's really 50% of it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold control and click and drag our actor class on and that'll get the git node for it. And we'll click hold control, click and drag, and we'll get a git node for our target points. Now the first thing we're going to do, there's a little bit of logic in here. So for logic, usually we want a branch node. So we're going to hold down B and click. So we want to create a condition. We want to make a test condition. And basically we want to make sure that this variable is not empty and this array is not empty. So if either one of these are empty, then we do not want to proceed with spawning anything. So we'll go ahead and wire this up like this. And the, there's a node that can test for that. And the node for this particular variable is going to be called is valid. So we'll drag off and we'll go is valid is valid is checking to make sure that there's something in this variable that's all it's really doing now there is no is valid node for an array but there is one called is not empty so you can think of is valid is the same as is not empty so what we're saying here is that if you have a reference set here this is not empty and this is not empty then we want to proceed. But two conditions have to be met at the same time. And so to test for that, we're going to need an AND Boolean. So we go AND Boolean right here. And then this plugs in here. And that's our condition. If this is an empty and this is an empty, then proceed to spawn. We'll actually proceed to loop through our array. So the next step is we're going to get a for loop. So that's what you use to go through all the elements in an array. So we'll go for each loop, this one right here. And our array is over here. So we're going to have to run a wire from here to over here. And that's kind of messy. So what we can do is double click on this and create a reroute node and just make a little bit neater. And so there's that. Okay. And we're almost done, believe it or not. And then the next thing we're going to do, and this is kind of the star of the show, is spawn in our elements. So we can right click and go spawn actor from class. And here on this particular node, we could go ahead and set the class right here, but we're going to set it in the, that's why it's instance editable, because we can set it in the level editor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit control and get the git node for this and plug that in there. So then we can set it from the level editor instead of coming back here and resetting it every time we needed to. Then we'll go ahead and put our wire in there. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is if we were to compile and save, we're going to get an error. And we'll go ahead and compile and save because we're getting an error because the spawner is saying, hey, I got, I know you want me to populate this thing, but I don't know where to put them. So it's saying like you're telling somebody to do something, but you're not telling them where to put them. So it's saying I'm not going to do anything. So what we have to do is tell this node where our elements are located in 3D space. 
So we're going to drag off of there. And there's a node that will do that for us. And it's called get actor transform. And transform is basically X, Y, and Z locations in 3D space. So then all we have to do, and we're, this is the last thing we have to do, is simply plug that wire in there and hit compile and save and we don't get any errors. And that's the whole enchilada right there. That's our whole script that will allow us to spawn in different classes to any number of target points we want to set in the scene. And as you've seen, we already put in five. So now what we'll do is we're done here and we'll go into the first person template. And then there's only a couple things we need to do now is we just need to drag this onto our scene and we won't be able to see this but you'll notice once we do, when we made them instance editable, they become available to us here within the level editor. And so we need to create, there, you can see there's no elements in our array right now. We just need to add elements. Since we have five target points, we need five elements. So I'll just click this five times. One, two, three, four, five. And if I hit this drop down box, I can assign each target point to an array element, just like that in order that one two four and five and then the last thing is and this is the this is the whole beauty of this whole system is because we have this actor class now we can swap in and out so in the starter content this all comes in the starter content we've got look we've got explosions fire smoke sparks steam so steam would be really good like in a city scene you'd put these target points down and then you could just automatically pop them in and get them going and then let's say you don't like steam you could pop in smoke so just like that so you wouldn't have to go back and replace them all individually so we're gonna in this example we're just gonna do fire and then we're done everything's good to go so the last thing is to maybe make this look a little more dramatic what we can do is if I come down here and I hit control within the scene I click in the scene and I hit control L this gizmo comes up and I can make it a little bit darker so we can see our fire and then what should happen, I can press G to hide the gizmos. What should happen is when I press play, you should see five of the fires spawn in. So let's see if that's what happens. I hear it. Yeah. And there they are. Our five fires burning just like that. And we, like I said, we could swap them out with any other asset class that we wanted to do. So it's just a real fast way of building the scene and putting particle effects and other effects into a scene. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found this helpful. Please take care and have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.